Okay. This is the newbie's guide to setting up the Cryus Multi Wii SE board. I will put a link in the packet uh, that will link to the main thread that this is in and show you the download. It has everything we need in order to get up and running, get the uh, Arduino, uh, I don't know what it's called, the Arduino. Uh, The Arduino compiler and board flashing environment uh, for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, we can get the latest software, which is 2.0, multi Wii software 2.0. Let's see. Gives us kind of a step-by-step uh, -step how to, even a little tutorial on the GUI that it had come with, and what the different definitions are. But right now, I'm not concerned about this. I want to scroll down and look right here. He has been kind enough, the person who made this little guide has been kind enough to go ahead and label everything for us. So let's take a look. We have camera pitch, camera roll, and camera trigger. These three, if you're going to use pan, tilt, and camera trigger, these are the three that you'll need and to be in conjunction with your auxiliary switches. Uh, the ones that we want to be concerned with right away are for our receiver. So we got the first pinout is throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Those first four, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. And then the fifth one is actually auxiliary one channel, which would be to trigger like pitch and roll, and camera stabilization, or the trigger. Uh, I'm not going to concern myself with that right now, but maybe later we will. Uh, just wanted the first four, and then I also needed six through ten, I believe, because we'll have throttle, aileron, elevate, elevator, rudder, auxiliary one. Then we have motor, well, he says motor one through six, but it's really like M3, D9, or D3, D9, D10, and D11. Uh, that's motors one through four, and it's going to correspond to the motors on the arms. And it's not one through four; it's actually three, nine, ten, and eleven. So, now that we know that that is the sixth through tenth, let's go ahead and scroll down a bit. And this is the quadcopter X mode is what we're going to run. And as you can see on the screen. The number three motor is the first one, then you have number 10, number 9, number 11. So that's going to correspond to the different pins that I just mentioned, the D3, D9, D10, D11. So let's find our number one speed control, which is also D3. Okay, so here's three, motor three, the speed control for motor three. Now the signals go inboard says signal positive ground so black is out white is in or signal is in and we want to find D3 which is sixth one one two three four five and then six so we have motor three on D3 then this is 10 so we find our signal wire for 10 uh, your signal wires are going to be longer than this to start, but I've already cut mine down. You can uh, cut yours down as well. But since that's 10, we put that on pin 10. So it doesn't go right next to 3 that you would think. It actually skips 1 because the next one is 9 and then goes on 10. Now, this is 9. Here's signal wire to 9. It goes between 3 and 10. Just press that down. So we have 3, 10, 3, 9, 10. And then our last one, of course, is 11. Just slap that on that old SIGA now. I don't know why it's acting fucking retarded.
Alrighty. <clears throat> so motor three, three. Motor nine on nine. Motor ten on ten. Motor eleven on eleven. And I just got these right here. And I'll do something with this. I'll put it back here and glue it down. But right now, we got our motors hooked up. Um, next, we need to do a little programming. And we will actually. Okay, so we've loaded uh, 2.1 since it's been released onto the board. You can see that I have a blue light flashing. All that means is that I've loaded 2.1 and the accelerometer isn't set. So what I want to do now is go ahead and get the receiver installed. I am using the DNR2 Plus, not using PPM Sum. I'm just using uh, the 1234 motor wires. So this, let me get my radio out and show you what I'm using. I'm using a Turnigy 9X that has the telemetry uh, free sky module in it. This is for the uh, JR radio. And I'm using a 7 decibel patch antenna from Aloft Hobbies. Actually, this isn't from a loft, this is from range video. Um, I've gone with this combo just as it sets. I've gone three miles before I got a beep. Your mileage may vary, but it's it's been really good to me. I've got the Fataba gimbals. Well they're not gimbals, just the Fataba sticks. They're really comfortable comfortable on your thumbs. And I'm a thumber, I'm not a finger I like the thumb stuff really comfortable I like the radio I have in the back I installed a cable onto the board so that I can use my USB ASP uh, programmer and I updated it to ER9X firmware the firmware is amazing so let's go ahead I'm gonna if you have this radio you can follow these steps if you don't have this radio you're gonna have to kind of figure out on your own how to do it but maybe these will help you I'm gonna kick it on First thing I want to do is go into my menu and I want to create a new model. I'm going to call this model uh, whatever. Let's just do FPV Spider. FP. I guess I need an S here, don't I? Okay, FPV Spider. I'm going to set my timer to 10 minutes. Can set it to whatever you want. Ten minutes is about what I usually fly with. I'm going to turn the trigger on. I'm going to turn it. This I believe is throttle. Let's see. Okay, to throttle. Countdown is what I want. Throttle trim, no. Throttle exponential, no. Trim uh, increments, that's how much these actually trim it. Like extra fine is an option, then fine, then medium. I like it on extra fine for quads. It's set normally to exponential, which I believe is too much. So put it on extra fine. Everything else we're going to leave the same in here. Okay, go to three. Before this is exponential dual rates. I don't do dual rates or exponential through the radio, I do it through the multi Wii board. This is a channel order. 
the radio comes stock, the ER9X comes stock for me with channel 1 is rudder, channel 2 is elevator, channel 3 is throttle, and channel 4 is elevator. However, as we noted, the board actually wants uh, channel 1 to be throttle, 2 to be aileron, 4 to be elevator, or 3 to be elevator, and 4 to be rudder. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, we could just mix the wires, but it's not hard to change it, so might as well just change it. And it's really easy. You go down to channel 1, press and hold so, uh, menu until it clicks. We want channel 1 to be throttle, so we just click over until it's throttle, and there it is. Hit exit, go down to channel 2, press and hold. We want channel 2 to be aileron. Aileron. Go to channel 3. That needs to be elevator. And then the last one, channel 4 needs to be rudder. Now we have it set up just like the board wants. Channel 1 is throttle, channel 2 is aileron, channel 3 is elevator, channel 4 is rudder. And now I'm going to set one more up because I'm going to use pan and tilt later. So let's go ahead and set it up. I go down to channel 5, press and hold. Now I'm going to do source and I want it to be on full. Go down to switch. I want mine to be on my aileron or my gear switch. I guess I'm going to put it on my gear. This is the switch that actually controls turning on and off. Then I'm going to go down to multiplex and I'm going to put replace and then exit. Now I have channel 5. When I flick that switch, it goes to full on, which will activate my camera stabilization. And it's on my gear channel. Okay. So, let's go here. This is endpoints and sub trims. We need to go into multi week config now. Since we have 2.0, we'll open the 2.0 that we downloaded. And we want the config. Actually, before we do this, let's go ahead and hook up the receiver. Remember, we now have channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 is throttle, so it needs to go in the throttle hole. Move this around just a bit. And if we remember from our screen, it goes, let me pull it up. It goes throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. So, channel 1. It should just go in line and remember that it is negatives out, so throttle, <clears throat> aileron, elevator, rudder. And this, uh, what's nice, is the 5 volts from the FTDI and through the board will actually power my receiver so I don't have to hook up a separate UBEC. Now we can go ahead and open up MultiWii 2.1 that we've downloaded. And we're actually going to, since we've already installed it on the board, um, let's go ahead and up Applications, Windows 32, MultiWii Config 2.1, MultiWii Config 2.1 EXE. Hit run. Here we are. This is the config file or the GUI. Board's still flashing. We want to click on this COM5. Okay, now it's connected to the COM. And we're going to hit start. Now it's connected to the board and it's reading the sensor output. You can see down here it's reading the sensor output. What we need to do first is I'm on a fairly level ground we need to calibrate the accelerometer. Hit calibrate accelerometer in the GUI and there we go it's calibrated. I'm going to do it one more time because it acted weird. Accelerometer is calibrated. Now you also have to calibrate the magnometer. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to use it. All I'm using is the I'm not even really using the accelerometer except for camera stabilization, but I just use the gyros. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some things. We have on the screen, these are our PID rates. This is actually what stabilizes the board. Uh, a high P 
is kind of like the force or the the resistance to force that acts on a copter. So if wind hit it and it tried to blow the copter side or back or whatever, the P is going to kind of help resist that force. The I actually can be thought of as kind of like heading hold. If you make the copter go forward like this, without any I, it's automatically want to just kind of come back to where it was. It's going to want to come back to center, and kind of do like a self-correction. So with I, when you have a higher I value, if you press forward, the copter is actually going to stay forward like this, it's, and it's going to continue on its path. It's not going to want to come back. Uh, so when you're first learning to hover, I can actually be set really low to get kind of like a self-stabilization without having to turn the, excel the uh, level mode on. D, they say, actually smooths out low speed vibration or high speed vibrations when it comes back to center. So when you hit the stick full off and then you go back to center, it might get a little oscillation when you come back. And the D is supposed to smooth it out. I think it's supposed to, uh, like, guess what the errors are going to be and then compensate for it or something like that. I, don't, I really don't know. I just know that D affects P and I, or D affects P. So the higher the D, the higher the P. But you, you have to get a balance. You, you know, I mean, you just can't go nuts with it. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm not going to mess with and I'm sorry because I don't mess with it I, I, I'm a flyer, I don't play with the level hold and all that, I just fly them so I haven't really messed with it down here they've added throttle exponential it looks like throttle curve type thing, I, I'm not going to mess with that at all but what I will mess with is the rate it's too high to start so let's drop this down to 0.65 and then too much exponential bring that to 2.35 this is a good start we need camera st stabilization to work if we're going to use it so this is how we can enable it we set up auxiliary one or we will have so we'll just go to camera stabilization we're going to click on auxiliary one until it actually lights up it never fucking lights up for me though I don't so fucking dumb. I hate this. There it is. Alright, it's lit up. Now we have some settings that we want to write to the board. We just come down here, click write. It writes them to the board. And that's done. Now, we have to come over here and we have to set up our uh, controls for the radio. Now, remember we have minimum of a thousand, we have middle at fifteen hundred, and we have a top at two thousand. And the way that we make all that right is through the endpoints and through the um, sub trims. So let's pick a channel. Let's go ahead and start with one throttle. You can see it moving up and down. We want to go all the way to the bottom and we want that to be a thousand. Right now it's 990. So what we're going to do is come down to the bottom for the end point, the native, and we're going to go to 999 or 99. It goes to 994. Go to negative 98. There we go. We got a thousand on the bottom. That's what we want. Now go to the very top and we want 2,000. 201 is perfectly fine, 1999 to 201. I'm going to leave it so I don't have to adjust the top. Now, set it to the middle as best as you can. Half throttle is what I mean. Best as you can. And that wants to be 1500. It's 1503, so I come over to sub trim. Well, it's 1501. Let's see if I can click one down. Get 1500. Now I'll click two down. Three down. Fifteen oh one is good. Fifteen oh three. I mean, that's close enough. All right. So let's go to channel two. Channel 2 is aileron, yes, row, so go all the way down, we're at 1,000, that's, well, no, we're not at 1,000, we're 993, so go over, we go to 99, 1,002, I'm going to work with 1,002, go full, it's 2,006, so we need to bring that down one, 1997, that's a 1999, 2001. Okay, so there we go. 1000, 2000. Go to the middle. We're at 
1515. That's not what we want. So let's lower it. Okay, so there's roll, not working right. It's nothing's an exact science, I guess. Alright, so about 1500, it's spazzing out there, that's fine though, it doesn't matter. Okay, so elevator, 990. Nine ninety eight is close enough because if I go one more it's too much. Alright, and then we'll go full throttle. Two thousand seven is too much. Go to ninety-nine. There we go. Okay, and then go to the middle. And we want fifteen hundred. There we go, fifteen hundred. Okay. Now let's do y'all. All the way over, I get 991. There's 1,000. All the way 2013, that's too much. Thousand four is good. Thousand two, that's fine. And in the middle, we need fifteen hundred. We got fifteen hundred. Oh no, we got fifteen oh six. Okay. There's fifteen oh six. Fifteen oh two. Fifteen hundred. Now, my roll, for whatever reason, is acting retarded. Um, I mean, it's jumping around a little bit, but I think it's going to be okay. Those values are close enough. So let's do this. Let's test our motors. They kick on at 11.50, go full throttle. They should have close to 2 grand, and they do. They're not all going to be exactly the same because we have an I value in there. The I value causes them to differ a little bit. There we go. The radio is set up to where we can actually fire the motors up, and I'm going to do that right now. So to get out of here, just hit stop. And then close com. Close this. 